I probably say this a lot, but this... Freaking race, dude, was insane. First race ever at Red Bull Ring. These guys were throwing it down, and I was hitting some sexy drifts behind them. So this is the car, this is the track, and this is somebody who at first seems really impatient, but honestly, it's totally justified. What the f <laughs> what, the, what was that? Um, okay, so hopping into qualifying, Red Bull Ring. This is, we have only ever driven 20, about almost 30 laps of this track. I bought this track this day, and this is the first race ever. My first qualifying session, first qualifying lap ever on this track. Breaking before the 100, directly over that curb. Want to cut that curb on the inside, just super slightly that sausage, and uh, get to full throttle as quickly as you can, straightening the wheel out. Same thing here, almost the exact same braking marker and pretty similar braking pattern, except you turn in a little earlier and you really have to watch for the elevation. Uh, it's very strange coming out of that exit. It's kind of like a crest, so you have to lift. Uh, or not lift, but hesitate onto the throttle. Breaking earlier there at around the 150, down into second gear, very, very light uh, and long trail braking, and heading into this next corner. This one has a little bit stricter track limits, so I don't go as far over this curb as the other ones, and I do it just briefly in third gear, super long, super light trail braking moment. Pushing around to the outside, I hesitated on the throttle on this occasion, braking around the end of that curb, and I like to take this curb on the inside. We'll talk more about that as the race progresses, but uh, at least for this lap, that's how I was driving. And then pushing all the way out using that, uh, that exit curb, braking around the 100 here. You want to peek slightly after it. Super light braking. You really just want to guide the car over that inside curb. You can push out wider here than basically anywhere else on the track. And same thing for this final exit. You can go all the way out onto that green and white, but you have to rejoin before the grass. So coming across for a 133.31. Now we did have one more lap left to try and better our time, but it would go sour pretty quickly going around the first corner and just getting a lot of rotation sending our car spinning or sliding sideways and that would end our qualifying which um <laughs> ignore the mouse we set a 133 uh starting in p5 as car number six the guys at the front are about a second faster than us there is our car beautiful car behind us is uh roxy or his actual name is Robertson. Anyway, he is a viewer of the channel and blamed me for his iRacing addiction, so you're welcome. But behind him, this is uh, Josh Garner, who is a YouTuber. Go check his channel out. He uploads uh, track guides and is very consistent. And let's get right into the race. Pivotal moment on the start as car number two, Travis E. Peterson, launches ahead of car number one, who was in P1. That is, His name is Olaf, and uh, he will claim P1 heading into turn one. There are two two wide behind him and then two wide behind me as well. Uh, car number five actually manages to find his way up the inside of me as I don't get a fantastic run through the first corner. Already about a second behind Austin and Samuel who are those two that are side by side ahead of us and I'm going to end up seeding this position to Elson as we go into, this is actually corner three, so that slight corner uh, down the straight actually counts as a corner, and I really, really see that position, as well as seeding about four tenths of a second to Samuel and Austin ahead. Now looking behind, and the guy who started behind us, that pink car, he's fallen back, he's now right ahead of Josh, we'll check on him in just a second. Coming up to corner four, this is, and a little bit of a lockup from Elson up ahead. Very easy to lock up there as it is a downhill corner and your car goes very light. Robertson in the dirt behind us. We're going to rewind to see what happened there. Back to uh, corner three, so entering into corner three. Car 22, two cars behind Robertson and probably about eight tenths. Absolutely flying up the inside, just going straight down the track. Robertson makes contact, loses uh, one position, and then ends up going three wide with Josh and the Apple car. And by the way, this is 18 laps of Red Bull Ring, just for those who are wondering about kind of what the race is. 18 laps of Red Bull Ring. So on the first lap, it's going to be pretty rough for Robertson. He just locks up just like Elson did, going down corner four and into the dirt. He's going to lose a ton of positions. Back on board with us as we are now up into P5, where we started. We had lost that position to Elson uh, through corner one, but we gained it back just now through corner four. So back up into where we started and really focusing on just kind of conserving my tires, trying to drive as smooth as possible, as little like um, inputs as I can. Checking the gap between everybody here. We got Elson about six tenths behind us, still around a second to Austin up ahead. And we're actually around 2.8 seconds to uh, Travis, who is in the lead. 
Coming through the penultimate corner, Elson once again struggling to uh, get the car stopped while heading downhill. Guy behind him tries to compensate for that, slides out. Josh Garner is going to pick up both of those positions, so great navigation in avoiding the accidents from him. Car number 12 has now separated himself from that group, and look at that. Wow. A lot of cars right there. So back on board with us as we start lap number two. Two cars ahead of us. This is Samuel Saninga is his name. Car number eight sliding out very similar to what we did in qualifying. And we will pick up that position for free. So up into P4. You can see it now. Travis on the relative. Two and a half seconds to him. We actually closed up that gap slightly uh, through the first corner. I don't know what it was about that first corner. But as the race went on, I just continuously... Um, I guess so I suppose I was just gaining confidence through there and started to send it a little bit quicker and quicker and quicker through there until you know maybe I pushed a little bit too hard at one point but we will get to that so under a second to um, Austin at the moment and look at how close those guys are up ahead Austin is car number 11 I'm car number six I should be faster theoretically or at least my I rating would suggest that. However, typically I would like to give myself the excuse that I just bought this track on this day. This is my first race and you know, it's okay for somebody to be quicker than me. But for whatever reason in this race, I was just determined to snap to it as quickly as I can, which is something I try to do every race, but I often still find myself trying to make excuses for myself. And I think that that is a, uh, a weak minded move uh, to do that. It's kind of like a cash out of you know, I'm trying to keep myself from actually putting in the effort to learn, to push, and to get better. And this race was not one of those races. I was taking note of every single corner, the way that the track and the, or the way the car was reacting to the track and the elevation throughout every corner and trying to adjust to it. So I did get faster throughout this race and we'll cover that in a little bit more detail later. Up ahead as we head through corner one or has Olaf heads through corner one, he is still stuck behind Travis. And when I saw Travis take the lead on, uh, on the race start, you know, I was cheering in my car because I know that Olaf is about three tenths quicker at least his qualifying was about three tenths quicker so I was hoping that they would get caught up and start to fight and sure enough here goes Olaf around the outside into corner three looks like he's gonna fall back but actually is able to open up that exit very nicely as you have a lot more space on the left side to open up your steering and get the power down sure enough here they go side by side all of the way down the back straight headed towards I think this is corner five actually I'm not I'm not sure uh, headed down the downhill corner where Elson lost it and car number one Olaf just about looking to go around the outside loses a little bit of mid corner speed and Travis tucks ahead of him all of that fighting honestly doesn't even really gain me any time to them pretty amazing that when they went through two corners side by side they didn't lose hardly any time we're still a second behind Austin as well now this isn't my greatest lap of all time either so that probably has something to do with it but I was super happy that at least it was Travis who ended up staying in front. Even though the fighting was short-lived between them, Travis is still in the front, so Olaf should catch up to him at some point, hopefully start some more fighting, and that should give me another chance to close the gap up a little bit. But uh, enough of those two guys. I need to focus on the car directly ahead of me. That is Austin Ward, currently sitting in the podium position that I would love to be sitting in. 0.6 seconds ahead of me. I got a pretty decent exit out of that last corner and heading towards the final corner, starting to get a little bit more confident here sending it with slightly more speed Austin actually seems like he went a little bit deep there and that doesn't actually always end up hurting your speed sometimes it helps it just depends on uh, what your minimum speed was kind of going over that curve if you carry more speed over that you get an off track you don't lose time if you just fuck up and accidentally slide out a little bit further when going like the typical speed you do end up losing a little bit of grip so it's kind of a toss-up going through there I don't know if that made any sense but to me it makes sense Anyway, 0.6 seconds still behind Austin, where we've actually closed the gap slightly to Travis in the lead. He was two and a half seconds at the start of this lap. He's now 2.2 seconds around there, 2.1 actually, as he's being hawked down by Olaf. So he's definitely trying to manage that pressure at the same time as he is trying to put in some clean laps. The gap between them is less than half of a second at the moment. I would love to be in that position with Austin. It looks like it may arise right here as he goes very deep there, probably not slowing the car down quite enough and then trying to slow it down too much too late throws his rear end out we are right on his tail about two tenths behind him as we come through the sweeping left and then the sweeping right heading towards the penultimate corner we have a better run 
tucking to the inside, breaking slightly early here to account for the narrow line. And I think he breaks a little bit late, actually goes wide, kind of messes up his speed heading into the final corner. We think about sending up the inside, think better of it, open up the corner for ourselves, ultimately lose a few tints on him, but we stay on track and um, we do stay within about half of a second. So we have the slipstream still to him as we come through this first corner, need to keep this speed up and at least match his speed. He totally misses the apex drive over the curb, goes way to the right. I think he actually ended up saving that though. Didn't even go off track and we gained that position for free. Second time that we have claimed a position through turn one just by somebody kind of losing it over that curb. Very easy to do. Up ahead, they are still right on each other's tail under or about half of a second from each other. It looked like Olaf was teasing a move to the inside through corner three, but uh, backed out. Now, Austin is still behind us as well. He's only about half of a second behind us, which is a pretty safe gap, and I feel confident in managing that at the moment. Checking in with Olaf and Travis up ahead. Olaf looking to close this gap up slightly. Travis turning in a bit later. They are looking for a later apex. I'm not quite sure which one of those lines is more beneficial through that corner. I think a lot of this track is uh, the lines aren't quite as important as just your pure speed. Even if you don't get the best line, but you keep that speed up. I mean, yeah, you're going faster, right? So your lap time will be faster. For example, Travis not hitting the curb, Olaf just barely hitting the curb, and then a few seconds later, me behind, absolutely obliterating the curb, and all doing similar times with these three different lines through there. That was definitely the one corner that I saw the most difference in people's lines, or at least later in the race once I was closer to Travis. Um, and it was really able to see what kind of line he was taking. So lap number six, Austin Ward has dropped to about two seconds behind us. The gap up ahead has opened up. We are all running very similar laps. We're in like the mid to high 32s at the moment. And they are still two or yeah, two tenths away from each other. One tenth actually now as Olaf is soaking up that slipstream into corner three and Olaf moves to the outside. But before we go any further, because this shit is about to get thrown down, I just want to shout out the like button, the subscription button and the bell. And as my uh, offer of thanks, here's my girlfriend hitting a trick shot. So we got the bucket right here and my girlfriend is going to throw this octopus against the wall and then to try and get it in the bucket. Dude, perfect could never. They could never. So back to the race. Um, he's going around the outside. It looks like he's not going to make a threatening move at first, but look at this. With his front wheel just barely even aligned with uh, Travis's bumper, he's able to get the speed down still. And looking at the relative, I mean, yeah, they're side by side right now. So heading in towards the downhill right-hander, Olaf on the outside, Travis on the inside, breaking slightly early, and he's making it work all the way over the curb, leaving plenty of space, very generous racing from Travis. Olaf keeping his car there. This next corner is a left-hander, so Olaf has the inside, and he's actually gonna have the inside for the second one as well, side by side through the left-hander. Travis somehow gets the power down, pushes wide, actually gets ahead of Olaf, and that is super necessary. He cuts deep, gets really good angle going back, gets the throttle down, extreme, extreme considerate racing from both of them. Olaf gave plenty of space there. Travis did the same early on, and Travis maintains position. Let's fucking go. I'm smacking the hell out of my dashboard in excitement because I've just gained, well, actually, I only gained about half of a second from all that, and then I go off track, um, Twice, actually, I think I might go off track here as well. Somebody's in the wall right there. Okay, we didn't go off track there. But yeah, from all that fighting, so it was like four or five corners going side by side, and I only gained half of a second on them. They're so fucking fast. But Travis is still ahead, so same thing as before. We still have an opportunity for Olaf to catch Travis and cause some mayhem and slow him down. We're going to hop on board with Olaf as they head towards corner three, where everything has been going down this race. Travis can't decide. He's kind of stuck in the middle of the track, not wanting to commit to anything. Olaf going up the inside towards corner three, very deep. Travis takes an extremely wide line there to open up his run, his exit all the way out of that corner, using a lot of that curb, actually getting that left tire on the yellow sausage curb to get extra mechanical grip and he is actually going to get such a good run he is ahead of Olaf heading into the downhill right hander by almost a full car length Olaf doesn't take the most aggressive line through here staying super conserved not only with his line but also his braking so kind of falls back a little bit and settles back behind Travis man at this point they're 2.5 seconds so they've lost another half of a second to me over the last few laps and I just need to keep chugging along, keep it going. I'm gaining time, even if it's super slow. I know they're gonna, going to continue to fight as long as Travis can maintain that lead. Take a look at my steering wheel right there. As you notice, it gets like a little bit hairy as I drive off of that curb. And I think that ultimately, even though driving over that curb, the line that I take there, 
doesn't lose you time. It, it opens up the possibility to make a mistake there as your inside tire is kind of coming off of that curb and back onto the track. So there's a slight change in elevation that can kind of unsettle the car. Uh, lap number 10, look at this. Look at this once again. Travis this time not letting the inside uh, open up at all. This is very defensive onto the inside. Olaf going around the outside very deep, cutting back, and look how far from the apex he is going to still get such a good run. And sure enough, it's going to be better than Travis's. I think the outside just lends itself a bit to having a better run there. You know, you get up there quicker, you get the car turned around quicker, and uh, then you get it on the power quicker as well. It's just a deeper line. So more distance to travel, but more ability to really apply the throttle. And Travis is holding the inside here which turns to the outside for the next corner he's actually going to move ahead of Olaf Olaf tucks to the outside to open up the corner for himself and I am sitting right behind watching all of this still absolutely shitting my pants this is just fucking amazing dude I haven't seen racing like this in a long time and I mean I'm watching it from a from a pretty far distance but at the same time I'm watching the relative as well and I'm kind of just gauging in my head like imagining what's happening and Jesus dude it was this was just I cannot overstate how much I was enjoying myself in this race. Like, already, I love this track. I love this track. I love everything about it. So 1.8 seconds to Travis at the moment. We have them sub two seconds. I think this is the first time this race they have been under two seconds apart from, like, you know, the first couple of laps. As we cross onto lap 11, taking a look at our previous laps, and I gained almost, I mean, I gained like six tenths in that last lap. So if they could continue to fight like that, um, I should be up there in no time, and I think a big part of that is the fighting gets harder for them as their tires start to heat up throughout the race. Once again, Olaf riding this guy's tail, Travis taking a super defensive line, forcing Olaf to the outside for corner three, and let's see how this plays out. Travis up the inside, Olaf cutting back a little earlier this time to perhaps get on the throttle earlier. I am right behind them, gaining about four or five tenths to, tra or, yeah, to Travis on that occasion, and it looks like Olaf actually my god he's done it okay so he moves ahead of travis he actually gets the power down track position he now has the inside and a full car length ahead of travis as they head down the uh downhill right hander here i go very very wide they're getting an off track actually uh, you can't see it but i did get an off track for that one and i am now just a second away from travis now We've covered this before. Once people lose one position, they start to look vulnerable. In some cases, they do feel vulnerable, uh, depending on who you are and how you handle the pressure. I'm hoping that Travis is one of those people. We are. We just about have him at a second, teetering uh, to underneath a second, actually. He does have the slipstream from um, Olaf ahead, but I have so much motivation right now to catch these guys. So pushing through, cutting that curb, using all of the track limits all of the way out onto that white and green, getting my right tire onto the white and green there and here as well. Neither of those were an off track, if you could believe that. And crossing onto lap number 12, we are now just a second from Olaf. 0.8 seconds from Travis. Travis teasing a move up the inside to try and stay in the mirrors of Olaf. Coming through the first corner, and we are absolutely flying through here, gaining two tenths onto Travis, and uh, a tenth onto Olaf as well, who is functioning with no slipstream at the moment. So Travis and myself both have the slipstream of each other, or of, I have it from Travis, he has it from Olaf, and Olaf is by himself. He has it from nobody. Into corner three, Olaf goes a bit deep for uh, the racing line there with nobody on his inside, taking a move or taking the line as if there were somebody on his inside. That actually loses him a tenth to us. Two tenths, excuse me, teetering on two tenths. And we are only half of a second from Travis now. So I just need to, I, I need to stay consistent here. We're doing it. Um, we ran a 32.5 on our last lap, which is our best time we've ever, ever driven. Um, absolutely drop the ball right there getting an off track and losing a couple of tenths but it's nothing major honestly it is nothing major right there we can come back from that really really light trail braking here trying to get the car turned in as early as possible so we can get onto the throttle you can as long as you keep your left tire on that curb you're all good through here and i am still getting all up on that curb you I don't know if you were paying attention, but Travis totally missing the curb as he always does. And Olaf still taking that line where he just barely, barely touches it. So all of us are maintaining our lines through there. All different, all working. And um, at the moment, I would say not necessarily mine is working better, but I am making progress towards these guys. I think their tires are probably a little bit overheated from all of that fighting. Travis getting an off track there. We maintain our position on the track. As we cross onto lap number 13, and we put in a new personal best, once again, a 32.5. Heading into turn one, they are right on each other's tails, two tenths away, and this gets me excited. Perhaps we could see Travis put a move down onto Olaf. He doesn't get the best run through the first corner, though actually ends up dropping about three or eight tenths to Olaf. Hopefully the slipstream can pull him back up. I don't think it's going to be enough 
really you need to have a better run out of that corner in order for the strip slipstream to really help you out it's not the longest straight in the world avoiding that curve on the inside of corner three taking a similar line to travis olaf's line is still a bit different than ours he's going deeper and really really avoiding the apex there just trying to carry more speed i suppose that is and not as tight of a uh, as tight of an angle Still breaking around the 150 there, very light braking there, like super light braking, very, very easy to lock up your car there. You're really just guiding the car down um, or guiding the car through that corner. And at this point, I mean, I, I've pretty much ignored, gotten it out of my head. You know, I'm just driving. I am like not autopilot, but I am so in the flow state. Um, when I joined the session, I had never even driven a time close where I, had, I hadn't, my, my personal best was my qualifying, which I think was a 33.3. And now in the race, I have consistently broken into the 32s for, I'd say, I think the last like six or seven laps. And it's just going to come down from here, honestly. I'm starting to make small, very small adjustments to my line. Big one here, I'm getting on the throttle way earlier, way earlier uh, through that final corner. And, or I'm not getting on the throttle earlier, but I'm getting full throttle earlier. And I'm just carrying more speed in through the braking as well. You can really send the car in there. It's not try not to think of it as a corner almost it's like a, a straight that you just kind of barely have to slow down for i jumped the curb uh, but this is one of those instances i was talking about where i carried so much speed in that the only reason i really went over that curb is because i was going faster so i didn't actually end up losing any time there even though i went over the curb and got a little uh, jolted you know so sometimes it just takes full commitment even when uh, you know you're gonna fuck up you can maintain your speed at the very least you know take an off track and that's all right lap number 15 heading into corner three once again this just seems to be where everything is happening corner one and corner three and travis makes a pretty big mistake here locking up his tire going slightly deep totally off of the racing line there I may have made a mistake there as well. I tried to cut underneath him, but taking that tight line, you don't quite get the exit speed you needed. So perhaps once I saw him lock up, I should have tucked wider, like stayed wider and come out back for a slightly later apex. And that may have given me a chance into this corner, but that's not the situation we're in. Uh, hindsight is always 2020. 20 Elson off the track. We are probably about three or four laps ahead of him now. He has had a mighty, mighty rough race, which sadly mine will turn into in just a second. Um, it'll unravel a bit. It's not... Nothing major, but as we come around the sweeping left-hander, Travis taking his line, avoiding the curb, thus um, avoiding the change in grip, and I... Oh, God, plus I hit a crazy drift there. Um, as I put my left tire over and it comes back down, I just slightly overcorrect and then overcorrect once again. I am literally hitting a sexy-ass drift. Look at this. You don't see that very often. You don't see that very often. And uh, I, I did lose some pace from that. I was super happy that I was able to hold it. However, I did lose quite a bit of time from that, almost half of a second, or accurately, yeah, about half of a second. Flash forwarding to the final lap, we have fallen off of Travis. I mean, we've kind of maintained the gap ever since we did that slide. Our laps are looking phenomenal. We're running low 32s. This is exactly what I want to see, what I love to see. A big thing I've been focusing on uh, over the past year has been just getting up to pace as quick as possible. Because if you ever were to get into a real car, you know, it's very important that you get up to pace as quickly as possible. You don't have forever to practice. Travis, getting pretty close to Olaf here, coming through corner three, and it is the last lap, but I am praying that he can make something happen here. Olaf also begins to blink in and out of existence. Perhaps he could blink out and never come back in, you know, and then we get P2 from that. Perhaps that happens and it scares Travis and he wrecks, and then we get P1 from that. Only a few quarters left, but anything is possible. So they are only four tenths away from each other. Even if the connection stays fine for Olaf, there is opportunity for Travis to do something amazing here. Coming through the final quarter, and you can see I actually take a line very similar to Travis this time, avoiding that curb. I've learned from it and I've implemented it. A round of applause for myself. That I mean, that's I feel like that's a good thing to be able to do. 0.4, uh, seconds between the two of them as they head through the penultimate corner, hopping on board with Travis right up behind Olaf. Olaf takes a very tight line there, or was it Travis taking a deep one because he definitely got an off track? And through the final corner, he's not going to be able to make use of it. Um, potentially, he could have used that off track to his advantage and absolutely flung ahead, but didn't happen. Crossing the line for P3, and that will be our race done for whatever reason we had the pit speed limiter on right there. Going around the first corner and just um, parking right behind Olaf, who whose internet fucks up just about 30 seconds too late for me. Here are the results. Whew, man, I, I, this was just, it, we gained I rating and we lost safety rating. 
I don't care about the numbers. I honestly don't, don't give a fuck about these numbers. The race itself was just so adrenaline inducing. Great race to Travis and Olaf, man. It was so much fun to watch that. Uh, if you guys are watching this, y'all are beasts. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me, leave a comment, check out my channel, and I will see you next time.